This lecture will cover chapter 26 of the communication systems book, and that being relief printing. This is the third type of printing process that we're going to discuss in this section. So relief printing uh, is printing from a raised surface. So as compared to lithography, which is printing from a smooth surface, uh, relief is printing from a raised surface. Uh, in this case, the raised surface is inked and pressed against the substrate. The very easily, easiest and most elementary example of relief printing is a rubber stamp, whereas the stamp is inked and then it's pushed onto the piece of paper and uh, that is impressed onto uh, whatever you put the stamp on. Uh, so the early practices for relief printing, uh, it was really first developed and used uh, by the Chinese uh, way back um, in the BC era. And in this case, what they would do is they would uh, carve, um, carve images into wood, and that would be used as the printing surface. Uh, so the first printed books were made this way. Uh, printed meaning, uh, I mean, books have been written for a long time and, ha and continued to be written for a long time, but it was always done by hand. Uh, so again, to come back to uh, the ability to now begin to mass produce something, and it was very, very, um, you know, prehistoric, it was, it was very, still very difficult, uh, but they were able to do this using uh, the relief printing method. Uh, but again, it took a lot of time. You had to carve out um, every component of every page and then print that into the book. So, uh, you know, obviously there would, you have, have to have many um, prints or carved images in order to make multiple pages. Uh, then in the, um, you know, right prior to the Industrial Revolution, we have Johann Gutenberg who developed the printing press. And, uh, you know, he is often referred to as the, the father of, of uh, mass communication. Um, because the printing press was such a powerful uh, mechanism in catapulting the ability to mass produce um, printed works. And so uh, this was back in 1450 uh, when he developed the movable metal type. Uh, again, you know, the, the process had been used for a long time. So he didn't necessarily invent the process, if you will, of relief printing. That was done by the Chinese. Uh, what he did was, first of all, uh, he um, used metal type um, in order to uh, have the images. So instead of using wooden carved images or wooden carved type, uh, he used metal type. And obviously the metal would last much longer, could do more and do faster. Um, and so he replaced the carved image carriers uh, with this metal type and uh, at the same time then also invented a high-speed printing press, which you can kind of see um, an example in the picture there. So he first of all created a way um, that had basically letters that were um, built in or carved into, um, the letters were carved into pieces of metal, and then he built a machine that could take those metal type and, and print those onto a page um, in a fast way. And so by doing this, we had the um, kind of the initial component of mass communication where, uh, or mass production of books. Now, it was still very elementary. It still took a lot of time. It's not like, you know, it just happened quickly, uh, but it was a starting point. Um, as technology advanced, um, then we had some different types of relief printing that were developed. Uh, letterpress printing is one example of a type of relief printing and one of the oldest methods used. Uh, so uh, here you can see an example of one of the types of letterpress printing is it uses the platen press. And again, this is still printing from a raised surface and it utilizes the metal types or plates, um, kind of like, you know, Johann Gutenberg did. Uh, but in this case, it can do it very quickly. So, um, you know, it's a pretty powerful machine. It's still machine platen presses like this are still used today a little bit, um, but not as much. And it, it's more for very specific procedures uh, that we still see these using today. Uh, but that was the, the common and popular way to, you know, to, to do a relief printing process in the 20th, 19th and 20th century. Flexography is a type of re relief printing. It is the most popular form of relief printing out there and was heavily used throughout the 20th century uh, to develop newspapers and catalogs and those types of things. Uh, it has some specific advantages. Uh, first of all, the image carrier is very durable and inexpensive. Uh, typically in the flexography process, it's a rubber 
carrier. Uh, so actually the image is again engraved or burned into um, a, a piece of rubber and so the raised surface is what's going to be transferred whether it's an image or a series of text or whatever it might be um, and it's very durable and obviously being a plastic it is inexpensive so um, that was a major advantage you could do millions of impressions with it so again it had durability and they would utilize fast drying uh, inks uh, which helps speed up the process the disadvantages, again, it being a plastic and being rubber, where there's a little bit of flexibility, thus calling flexography, uh, there, it wasn't as good as quality. It couldn't do as detailed designs um, as some of the other methods, uh, but it still was very popular. Uh, so uses today, um, it is used in package printing, um, imprinting, or finishing operations. And finishing operations such as doing like die cutting, we're actually using the machine to cut out uh, the shapes onto um, the paper or whatever it might be. Uh, you know, so relief printing was the most popular method of printing uh, used in America, you know, up until about the 1970s and 1980s, where um, at that point then lithography uh, kind of began to replace it. Uh, but again, up to that point, um, relief printing was the popular method used in, in printing um, newspapers. And so, uh, again, coming back to the development of metal type, that for a very long time throughout the 19th century, uh, it was a common job to be a type setter uh, for a newspaper company where basically you took the metal type, the letters, and the, would develop the words, and uh, set those into the machine that would then be used to uh, print on those particular pages. Uh, it is still used today, relief printing is still used today uh, for some newspapers, but most of those have kind of transitioned again over to the lithography process where it is much quicker. Um, but again, it was a, a great way for newspaper production. And you think about you know, the detail, there's a very big difference between the detail in a newspaper print versus a, uh, you know, a nice quality magazine. And, and there's a good comparison between the two. Um, obviously it's much less expensive and that's what we wanted for a newspaper, something that would be looked at for one day and thrown away. Uh, we didn't want to have to spend a lot of money and time making that and the relief printing process allowed us to do it um, to, to make you know millions of impressions over and over and over again uh, in a fairly inexpensive way using a fairly inexpensive paper that worked then, still works today uh, for doing newspaper production. Um, but again it's not as high quality so our higher quality prints and productions are going to use one of the other methods that we're looking at. So that is the major components of relief printing and uh, this will then lead us into our final printing uh, section which is going to be gravure printing.